Alright, so tap tap and welcome back to the roots of Yggdrasil. So you used to look trapped in here, but there's a little obvious flip and switch thing. That'll be a very common thing, so keep an eye out for that. These things, when they... These are, you know, slates that just read lots of stuff. Um, the red glow disappears when you read them, so you should always read those. I'm not going to read those, because I already read them in my original playthrough. Uh, open this chest, just another one of those switches. You gotta open every switch. There's a, there's a different condition for every single chest in the game. It's not just standard Zelda chests. Um, Sacred Orb gives you more HP, so that's a very good item to have. And like I mentioned in the last video, now enemies will start dropping these cards. They're just for collection's sake, but it's still fun to get them. Alright, and uh, NPCs, you'll get the card for... I think you need the guide app before they start dropping, but we just got that. Yeah, NPCs, you'll get their cards after talking to them. Uh, every time you go into a door like that, you're, it's almost always an NPC. So you look trapped, but no. Keep an eye out for that kind of breakable rock. It's not always breakable, but it usually is. And when in doubt, just whip every wall. I really do recommend playing this kind of on your own first, but obviously if you're looking for a guide and watching this video, you got lost somewhere. Um, I do recommend trying stuff out on your own, and like, watch the guide up until you find wherever you got stuck, and try stuff out beyond that. I really do enjoy uh, finding stuff out on my own, but uh, <laughs> this is definitely a game where you could use some help. That's a fun little trap. Uh, I'll pretend I did that on purpose, but I did not. <laughs> um, there's a lot of neat little screw use in the game that are uh, varying amounts of fun depending on how much health you have. Speaking of health, uh, we're going to go over here and save, because there's a first save point in the real part of the game right here. Always read with the item scanner first before you save, by the way, because that adds it to your holy grail. To open your holy grail, press select, and here you go. So yeah, we can go back. Uh, at any time back to that village of departure and uh, heal up in the hot springs. In the first game, all, the only way to heal was to get experience points and quote unquote level up, which re restored your health but does not increase any of your stats at all. And that's what these blue, uh, green orbs are. They fill that blue meter, you know, green to fill the blue, but whatever. Um, oh. Yeah, once that meter fills up, you get a full heal. And generally, you're just going to want to travel back, um, and you can s Remember, if you get stuck in a trap or something and you're about to die, you can just immediately pause the game, go into here, travel back to Village of Departure, save and heal up. <laughs> also, the, the, the cutscene when you pause is adorable. But yeah, this kind of gate generally is unnecessary, and I'm not going to use that, because it costs, um, it costs me some weights, and I'm going to need a lot of these weights. So this is a semi-hidden weight that we saw here. There's a lot of things that you'll see kind of like that where it's not entirely hidden out of you or maybe you'll need to break a pot or something. Just keep a really close eye out. So let's fight our second boss. What could it be? There's three of these statues in this area. You're going to need to whip the red eyes to remove the poison. There's an NPC that asks you to, ask you to do this, but uh, we already know. This boss is actually easier if you get an item that I forgot to get. If you, uh, we can get shurikens in this area. And if you just, uh, stand over here on this thing and jump, he will not be able to hit you, because you can attack him long range. But, I guess I have to show you the hard way. Or I could just die. That's fine too. So, let's get the shuriken. That's why it's a good idea to get the shuriken. The shuriken is just right over here, and I can't believe I forgot about it. Rude. So, don't worry about taking damage too much, unless you're gonna die, obviously. Because you can just go and heal, like I said. So now, we get the shuriken. And this boss is so easy that even I took a few hits here. We're just gonna go get it. Um, this is a puzzle we can't solve. That'll be a pretty common theme. You get... This game does a lot of teasing. Uh, it's kind of a Metroidvania thing to tease. This game probably teases more often than usual with stuff that you'll be doing quite a bit later. So now that we have the shuriken, we can attack at range, and... Now Ratatosker is a complete joke! <laughs> so, it's nice to have a ranged weapon. Certain bosses are more or less impossible without them. This one is very possible without it, but it goes from being a tricky boss to... impossible to take damage unless you try. So that opens this, by the way. Um, you didn't need to fight that boss, but it does open this up. We don't need to do that yet, but we will fairly soon. And yeah, 
this kind of just opens up this way back here. The game likes to trap you on things until you do, you know, until you either find an item or you open up a, another pathway. So we're just going to keep going up the top. There's three statues that we need to do. All of them are at the top of the map, so they're pretty easy to get to. Also, this is what the map looks like. It's not the most useful, but sometimes you can glean some uh, little interesting things. Did I not? Alright, I got it. Sometimes, another reason to save often is just because sometimes if you die a lot and you forget to save, you kind of forget what you actually did since you last actually saved. So that can be one of the more dangerous things. As you can see, some obvious stuff is going on here since we would that statue. There's some kind of screw you spikes that are placed in inconvenient positions. This is just a little shortcut thing we can open up. Lambalana has lots of little shortcuts that you open up instead of, you know, Instead of an item, you might get a shortcut, but they're still good to have, because you'll be going through a lot of places a lot of times. So, open up stuff when you can, and you'll save yourself some time later. Now, remember when I said you could leave bosses? Don't fight this boss. You can, and you can totally win. Um, especially if you spam shurikens. You'll need about 50 or 60 shurikens to do it. Or at least I did. Um, he's totally beatable, but he deals an extreme amount of damage, and uh, it's basically a sequence break. You're not supposed to be up there. And I wasted about four hours, not necessarily wasted, but I sequence broke for about four hours um, because I went up there and I assumed that's just where I was supposed to go. It was not, so don't do that. Um, fun little screw you here. You're actually supposed to do that, but it's also a trap. So that just opens a little passageway there. We can't do anything over there, so I'm not going to go, but uh, important to do that for some point. And I actually have enough weights that I don't need to buy any, which did not happen in my test run or my original playthrough. Again, it's no problem if you run out of weights. Just go back to the temple and go to the temp the hut to the left. No boss this time. Yeah, we can't quite go down there yet. Some nice 3D graph skips. Rude. So skeletons can rise from the dead. Um, you can just kind of preemptively attempt to whip every skeleton you see. Uh, you can also read hints from skeletons. They're a little different. I think the hint skeletons graphically. Yeah, you can talk to the skeletons. They have, you can read their last thoughts somehow. And they'll very often give you a hint as to where they died, why they died. Um, which is almost always a hint of an upcoming trap. You may not be surprised that skeletons are a foreshadow of a trap. Yeah, we just saved. We're gonna go around here to the left and unlock some stuff now. What we really need is an Ankh. To, to fight any of the major bosses, you need an Ankh first. So there is an Ankh in this very room, if I recall correctly. If you step on that middle thing... Ow. I don't know what that... I don't know why that even attacked me. Oh, I think I threw one too many shurikens and I hit the thing. Those blue guys, the blue eye likes to punish you for doing things in rooms um, where there's a puzzle to solve. Anyway, put a little thing on here. If we go in here, this is the lady that asks us to stop the poison. But uh, we, we need to do that anyway, so whatever. So as you can see, that opens up, when you break this thing, it opens up a little ladder, and so you don't have to go on that, because that will squish you to death, and that's bad. So now we got the up. Let's just trigger this just for, just for a larf. Okay, I'm trying to be, okay. <laughs> Well, that wasn't my best idea. So, when you get critically wounded and you hear that little beep, what you'll probably want to do is just chicken out. Teleport to Village Departure. Go over here. Take a little hot spring bath. In your clothes. Why not? Hypothermia is not a thing. Anyway, let's go right back in. I mean, it's hot springs water. It's fun. It's not like it'll cool when you go back in the ruins. It's all good. So, now that we have that onk, we can go back over here whip you, whip these bootleg Pikachus, fall on a spike trap, that's fine. And up here is our first big boss. These are what are called guardians. If you go over and explore somewhere else, there's a door that you can't get in without beating one guardian. And guardians are the major bosses. There's that dude that that lady told us to save, who will magically summon a boss cross. Gotta use the little onk. And there we go. And whenever you fight a major boss, it transports you into like a different boss dimension. So this is how you know you found a major boss. So these shuriken will come in extreme handy. 
You can hit him three times each uh, cycle. You can't hurt him until his mouth is open. You can save a few shurikens by uh, when he comes up. He alternates between up and down. When he's down, you can hit him a couple times with the, with the, whip, the, with the whip. I believe the whip does more damage. This is a boss that you can die to if you panic. And um, he's not too easy if you just calm down. Use shurikens when you should use shurikens. Use the whip when you should use the whip. I died once or twice to this. Again, I'm gonna make things look a little easier than they might be. I, I've beaten this area three times now, so that's that's why. Wow. I'm still gonna take some stupid damage just because that's how things go. I like the little grab the hat part of the, the jump animation. A lot of attention to detail and stuff. So again, only throw a free shuriken if you're sure they're all gonna hit, because otherwise one's gonna go to the waist. Oop. I like his little neck tentacles. So you should be entering ticked off boss mode any minute now. Not quite yet. Yep, there he is. There it is. Ticked off boss mode is go. And now he'll start shooting those little things. Those things will block your shots, so you gotta be a little careful. It's a little scary. Just kind of wait for them to pass. They're pretty easy to dodge. They just flow towards where you were. It's actually a little bit bad. There we go. We're good. Rest in peace, boss. There's a little bit of drama for you. You've obliterated Fafnir, but the adventure continues. And you gotta do a pose. Remember, leave me see. You gotta do a cool pose. There you go. So that's most of the roots of Yggdrasil. So there's still the lower portions to explore, though. Um... This is a Metroidvania sort of non-linear kind of deal. Very non-linear, depending on how you play it. Like I said, you can sequence break right now if you want to. Um, I will not even show you that in this video. Uh, I might make a little supplemental video showing you how to sequence break. Look, look for that afterwards, I guess. Um, I don't. I really don't recommend it because I got really lost when I did that. But you can get some items early and potentially do some neat stuff. So I do think I will do a little video to show that off. Just remember, if you if you do that and you feel horribly lost, or everything is too difficult, that's that's why. I just show off that little trap. Yep, yeah, that'll squish you. That's a one-way door, by the way. So keep an eye out for those. So these these secrets are pretty obvious in this area. Like I said, it's a pretty tutorial area. It's like a the first area is like baby mode tutorial, and this is like. Hard mode tutorial. This shows you the way the game's really gonna be. Also, you can deflect most shots like that with, uh, that's a trap. Um, oh, I forgot, there's, uh, there's actually a Fafnir card in that little gap there. Which, you know, I'll just go find here. So yeah, this opens up this way. Again, there's a lot of secrets to open that just kind of open up shortcuts. So this little, this fancy looking slate. It's part of the Aether series, it's Prophecies. Those are, uh, they seem important. I haven't beat the game yet, and I kind of assume they're some part of, they're part of some major puzzle. Oh, you know what I can actually do is just transport. You can teleport anytime, there's no cost to teleporting, there's no real downsides whatsoever. So feel free to warp around to your heart's delight. So I'm just gonna go and get that Fafnir card that I kind of forgot to do. So bosses do not drop their cards. Boss cards are always hidden, uh, usually in the same area as when you fight the boss. Oh, well, that's, oh, I should have mentioned this earlier. Jumping in this game is interesting. If you jump straight, you can't move until the apex of your jump. Uh, if you're already walking, you can kind of move more like, um, you know, a more Mario style jump. We have more control of the momentum. Um, if you fall, you cannot control your jump at all. So if you need to move in the air after a drop, you gotta jump first. It's a very deliberate movement game. Uh, there's a lot of little quirks like that in this game and you just kinda gotta get used to them. Well, speaking of interesting control issues, um, we're not gonna go in there quite yet. Uh, speaking of interesting control issues, this game doesn't currently work with PS4 controllers properly. So if you have a PS4 controller, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, um, I 
hope they're working for a patch for that. There's there's the Ratatoskr card. This is a little shop. The guild app, which we're gonna buy, alerts us of secret shops. So we're gonna equip that. Remember to equip things. If you don't equip apps, they, they don't work. Let me try one last time to get this. This is not like an item that you truly need, it's just for collection's sake, but you know. If you're playing La Mulana, there's, there's a fair chance that you want to get all of the things. It's kind of a fairly common secondary goal of any Metroidvania. So we're gonna go over here. And we're gonna remember to jump this time. When in doubt, just jump. Don't never really we won't ever really want to drop. Oop. There we go. Fafnir acquired. Yeah, going just going blindly down falls will very often lead to spikes like it just did there. Is there a secret in here? No, just wait. Never hurts to just whip the walls. Whip them good. So that's a sigil which we can't open quite yet. Which we'll be able to do very soon. Shy. Yeah, you know what? This is something we don't need to do until much later on. But we may as well do it while we're here. This is a big old rock. It's very dangerous. So the golden rock stores the power of the stars. You know what? This seems like a good idea. Oh, oops. That was a bad idea. Let's just teleport out. <laughs> this game does require you to think very in a very meta context. That that actually was. I didn't cheese that or like, you know, just narrowly avoid death. But you know, did something silly. That's actually the solution to the puzzle. Oh, oops. That little notch means you can go down the ladder. Also, the, there's a shortcut I forgot to open while I was on my way down there. Should have done that. Oop. Shortcut. Roof. The bats are, like, semi-hidden. They're, they're a little easy to miss. You need the uh, Lamp of Time or something there to uh, activate that, so we can't do anything with that. But what we can do... Go down here and activate a nice little shortcut. Oh, we got the Nidhogg card. And, oh wait, activate that. There's like a 50 50 chance that when you see a switch like that, it's either a, a trap or a uh, secret. So you just kind of got to save often and uh, take your bets. So now that's a little trip back here. Which is really nice because that's a one-way ladder, and one-way ladders are rude. The, the, the ceiling above a one-way ladder will be a little bit more solid, by the way. In fact, let me show that off real quick. Because I got really frustrated with one-way ladders in my first playthrough. Oh wait, there's actually not really an indicator that that's a one-way, is there? I guess I'm wrong. I thought there was a hint that there's one-way ladders, but maybe there isn't. Anyway, take a little detour. We're going to take just a peek in a new area here. Divine Fortress. Get rid of these ghosties. So you got to break that to open this. Really good music in this area, by the way. So I'll just let you enjoy that for a second. Once the good part starts up, anyway. This guy doesn't don't do anything stupid. I will. See so yeah, a standard chest here. First map, first uh, chest you get in an area will almost always be the map. Sometimes not though. So all we need to do in this room. Uh oh. Oh dang it! I ran out of shuriken. Uh, that's not inc it's not critical that I do this. So I'm probably just gonna not. But um. If you throw some shurikens in there, you break that pillar and you can use that save point. Uh, I really recommend doing that, but for now, I'm just going to continue on. Because there is an important bossy right here. A boss that would be easier with a proper supply of shurikens. I guess I kind of burn shurikens a bit faster than I usually do. Hey, buddy. Expect to get hit multiple times by every enemy. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is kind of a hint that there's a uh, no way back down. That kind of more solid thing. 
So the trick to this boss is that one of them just takes a little nap break. And you can defeat them in one nap break. Uh, if you're fast. I believe they stopped taking nap breaks once you defeated one, but... They're not too... Too tough. Kind of here at the bottom is one of the better places to hit him. Oh, for Pete's sake. My aim ain't what it used to be. There we go. Many bosses will always drop a good amount of money, so try to get it. I have, I have lost a lot of mini boss money, and it's been unfortunate. So now we get to the origin sigil, which will light up all of these sigils on the wall. And, when they're lit up, you can break. Oh, I think you just walk into them, actually. I don't think you even need to whip them. Uh, that also kind of solves the puzzle here. Makes that eye close. You can talk to this guy. He's just... Oh, he's just more and more. That's tear, apparently. See, so, yeah, unfortunately that I ran out of uh, shuriken. But I'm sure you can... You just throw the shuriken through that gap. It's not really a big deal. Hey, pig. Bye, pig. You can't read that sign yet. You need a new, uh, you need an app for your tablet thing to, uh, read those big wall things. And they're actually very important, but that'll be for a later video. So, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very risky since I'm very close to getting a level up here. I'm just gonna try to defeat an enemy to, uh, heal instead of going to a save. I'd really recommend, if you're in my situation, I really would just recommend going to save. Oh, by the way, these are stairs. These are Castlevania stairs. You can go down them. I haven't really needed to yet, but now that we have this, we can break this. And we are now out of the Roots of Yggdrasil. We continue on to the next area. By the way, if you fall in that pit, you now can't get out unless you... If you get stuck in a pit you can't, like, actually jump out of, use the Holy Grail with the menu to fast travel out. There's a few spots in the game where you can get stuck like that. So yeah, if only we could push that white block, but we can't. So, this is Anwen? Anwen? I don't know how to pronounce what this place is. Anwen. But yeah, once again, make sure to read the thing, because that adds it to your fast travel. And now, we are out of route to Drasio. So, join me next time. I'll have a little supplemental on how to beat that dragon that you really shouldn't beat because it's a naughty naughty sequence break, but I will show you. And then we're gonna continue on to Antwin.